Hello everybody, I'm Rusty. I want to welcome you to Island Breeze Tropicals. So today we're going to have episode two of Bromeliad Family Tree. Wait till you see this family. So you know what? The sun is shining, the island breeze is blowing. It's time that you and I got growing. Come on, let's have some fun and let's look at this Bromeliad family. So on today's episode of Bromeliad Family Tree, we're going to be talking about this family and it's called Bilbergia. There are about 44 species of Bilbergia. Compared to Neoregilia, that doesn't sound like a lot. But if you take a look at all of the many cultivars, there's always going to be one I think that's going to strike your fancy and they come in all sorts of different colors. Now Bilbergia has been hybridized quite a bit. It's one of my favorites for hybridizing because it does have a flower structure that's very conducive to doing that and you can get all sorts of different shapes and sizes out of them. One of the things that makes Bilbergia so interesting is that they are so amenable to hybridizing and that's why there are over 400 different hybrids of Bilbergias and that's out of only 44 species. So these two Bilbergias came out of the same cross. It was a cross between Bilbergia Hallelujah and Bilbergia Casablanca and take a look at the difference. Look at the color in this one and then look at the color in this one here. Now in general Bilbergias have a fairly distinct shape and I would say that it is more columnar than some of the other genera. This by the way is Bilbergia Hallelujah but there are exceptions to every rule. This is Bilbergia sandariana. I'm going to turn it around and you can see that this isn't quite as columnar. Still is not a flat shape. The rosette seems to be more upright and vase shape. This is Bilbergia sandariana and it comes from Brazil. So Sandariana is a species, that means that you can find it in the wild someplace. And I'm going to try and zoom in here and show you why this is one of my favorites. If you take a look at the leaf edges, this is a Bilbergia that is armed. And I love the juxtaposition of the black spines on the green leaves. And in general, most Bilbergias are pretty friendly. I would say this is pretty toothsome, wouldn't you? So in general, what you're going to see is a more columnar or vase shape uh, to Bilbergias. So another generalization is that Bilbergias are generally considered to be a clumping bromeliad. So the pups come out on clumps as you can see right there. But there are exceptions again to every rule. And this is Bilbergia pyramidalis. And I don't know if you can see it very well, but that has a stolen that the pup comes out on. Now this is Bilbergia pyramidalis. It's generally just a green plant. And you can see that the pup is coming out on a stolen. So in theory this one could be installed into a tree. Here's another exception to that rule and this is Amoena stolonifera. Now this one is marginated and I think you can see the pups coming out on stolons there. And Amoena stolonifera. Now this is a variegated or marginated plant um, and you can see by moving over here that that pup has a stolen right there but in general my experience with amoena uh, stolonifera is that it's not really a good climber 
um, because the pups really don't like to attach all that much. Um, they have a tendency to grow straight up and then bend over, but that does make this particular Bilbergia really suitable for being in, as you can see, a basket and you would hang this and then eventually the pups would start draping down. So maybe not that good for installing in a tree, but really, really superb for putting it into a hanging basket. So even though there are some Soliniferous Bilbergias, most of them do clump and they clump like this, which means that the pups come out of a central area and don't move out from the plant. So you only have one point of attachment when you install them in a tree. So what will happen is as the plant grows, it gets more and more biomass in the foliage. It's only attached down here and not having multiple points of attachments from each pup that comes out on a stolen. And when the wind blows, boink, it comes right out of the tree. Now, like most bromeliads, Bilbergias are tank type epiphytes. And so they do need water in the central tank. So you water these just like all the rest. So when it comes to sun hardiness, I found through testing that some of them can be quite sun tolerant even down here in Florida. In general though, consider them to be bright indirect or filtered light plants and they'll grow just fine for you and maintain all of their beautiful color. But there are exceptions to every rule and I've actually tested Bilbergia Hallelujah and I have to tell you it seems to be pretty hardy in full sun. Now they always look their best if they are going to be in bright indirect light or filtered light. So I wouldn't stress the plant too much and if you want the beautiful color that's the lighting that you should give most of your Bill Burgess, even though some can handle full sun even down here in Florida. So Bill Burgess come in all sorts of different sizes, but this one is huge. This is Bilbergia brasiliensis, and I think you can see that this hardly fits into the frame. I've stepped back, and uh, you can see the, the uh, jury rig black curtain in back, and in general, that is sufficient to show you most of the bromeliads so they don't blend into the background on the uh, plant shelves. But take a look at the size of this thing. It really doesn't even fit into the frame. Uh, this is a species that comes from Brazil, hence the name Brasiliensis. And a lot of Bilbergias do have horizontal banding. The Brasiliensis is no exception. And if you take a look, you can see this inflorescence and it's quite large too. Remember, this is a three foot tall plant. Now these are the flowers and they look more like flowers than a lot of other bromeliad genera. And that's what makes this such an easy type of inflorescence to use for hybridization because everything is exposed. The stamens and the pistils are, are out there and it makes it pretty easy. And that's one of the reasons that I play around with hybridizing Bilbergias. And just like so many uh, Bilbergias, this particular inflorescence will probably only last at most two to three weeks. So it's very much a present moment thing. So anyway, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed learning about Bilbergias. I'm sure that you're going to be able to find more than one that you're going to want to have in your collection. They are a very diverse genus, and all of the hybrids are really, really cool. So no matter where you are, I hope your sun is shining. I hope you have an island breeze blowing. I know that you should keep growing, have some fun. Thanks for stopping by, and we'll see you next time.